Okay, folks, our next qu two questions deal with analytical geometry, which is usually not a difficult concept. So let's have a look. You're given three points. They say the distance between H and J is root 5A. They want you to find the value of A. Okay, clearly because you're working with distance, you're going to start with the distance formula. Now let's just square it from the onset so we don't have to deal with the square root. Between H and J, that distance is 7 minus minus 1, which is 7 plus 1. Be careful of the double negative. Okay? And 3 minus minus 1, which is again 3 plus 1. All that's squared. They give you HJ, so this will be 5A squared. Remember, I squared both sides to get rid of the root. Okay, so what do I do? Normal algebra. 64, no, sorry, 8, yeah, 8 squared is 64, plus 4 squared, which is 16, is 5a squared. This is 70, 80, so a squared will be 80 divided by 5. And 80 divided by 5, we all know, is 16, therefore, what is a? a can be plus or minus 4. Please notice that there's two possible values for A. Okay? But now, be careful. There's four marks. A can take on both values. But what did I give it to you as? I said, but HJ, I gave, we gave to you as a root 5A. HJ is a length. This is already positive, so that has to be positive. So from here you can say A has to be bigger than naught. Therefore A can only be 4. Okay, because we gave you the length here as HJ. And length is only positive. Without this bit of reasoning here, you are not going to get the full marks for this question. Okay, folks, I hope you're happy with that. So A is only 4. Now, EG is perpendicular to GA. Let's draw that. EG, I'm drawing any line, is perpendicular to DGJ. The common point that is shared is G. So those are perpendicular. E is the point 2 and 3M. G is the point 3 and 1. It was given as that. And J is minus 1 and minus 1. Now with that there, determine the value of M. Because they perpendicular, the gradient of GE multiplied by the gradient of GJ has to be minus 1. That is the rule that you use for perpendicular lines. So that gradient, 1 minus 3M, they're asking us to find M. That M doesn't represent meters. Okay, so 1 minus 3M over 3 minus 2 multiplied by 1 minus minus 1 is 2, it's 1 plus 1, and 3 minus minus 1 is 4, that must give you minus 1. Okay, so let's just clean up a bit here. 1 minus 3m multiplied by 1 over 2 is a half is equal to minus 1. I'm just going to multiply that 2 away. So I get 1 minus 3m. The rest now is just doing arithmetic and solving for m. And a little bit of algebra and arithmetic. 2 goes across by multiplication. Okay, that's what I've got. I throw this one over. Minus 3m becomes minus 3. It's minus 2 minus 1. So m is indeed 1. Okay, that's not difficult. That took care of question 8. What did we have to know? We had to remember that a perpendicular relationship is the result of two gradients multiplying out to give you minus 1. That's all you needed to know. And here you had to pay a little bit of attention to the fact that the length was given. Look at where A is. Yes, it has two answers. You have to show it's plus or minus 4. If you just went from there and said A is 4, without showing me why you're only saying it's 4, again you would have lost a mark. Okay, so this reasoning is very important. Let's look at question 9. Question 9 had given to us a diagram 
the diagram we've got the three vertices two sorry two vertices given and a third point and they tell us angle CAB which is this angle over here is 63,4 degrees big. Well, that's interesting that they give us an angle. Let's see. Write answers correct to one decimal place in this question. Now, let's see what they ask us. They say to us in the first question, the equation of AB, that equation there is y is equal to minus x plus 2. Now that tells us two things. It tells us that's the point 2 and it tells us the gradient of that line is minus 1. They want us to calculate there's alpha, that angle over there. Okay now folks, hello. This is nothing other than what you're used to doing. You know that the tan of alpha is equal to the gradient which is minus 1. Your inclination rule. If your tan of alpha is that, then alpha would be the inverse tan of minus 1. If you put that into your calculator, you're going to surprisingly get an angle of minus 45, which is not alpha. Okay? It's this angle here that you just calculated. That is where minus 45 lies. So you have to take this answer here and you've got to add 180 to it. So you get minus 45 plus 180 would leave you with alpha. So I add 180 here and I'm going to be sneaky. I'm going to say I have to add 180 over here as well. So I don't have to rewrite everything. So this gives me 100 and 35 degrees. Quite straightforward, small little catch. It's not really a catch, it's an interesting thing that they did with that angle and that we know that your calculator is going to give you the negative angle instead of giving you the obtuse angle. Okay, let's see. Hence show that the equation of the line AC, this line's equation over here. Now folks, again, let me draw it on here. This angle there is the angle beta. That is a triangle over there. I've just found this angle. That angle I found to be 135 degrees. I do have that angle. So I can find beta. Remember, alpha is that plus that. Alpha is equal to the angle at A plus beta. So what is beta? The angle beta is equal to alpha minus angle A. Alpha I've got, it's 135 degrees minus the angle at A, which is 63,4 degrees, and my arithmetic is shocking, so I'm going to do that using my calculator. 135, will help if I switch it on, minus 63.4 gives me a result of 71,6 degrees. Now I have that angle. So I take the tan of 71,6 degrees, and that will give me the gradient of AC. Again, I'm working with my inclination rule. So there's my result. I take the tan of the answer I got, and it gives me 3. Let's round it off to the nearest integer. So my gradient of that line is 3. The only thing I now need, I know the gradient is 3, is I need one more point. I don't have this point, but I have that point. So the equation of the line segment AC, if you want to use the notion of a variable point again, I've got the point C, the gradient between A and C, has to equal the gradient that I just found. So Y minus 5 over X plus 3 has to equal 3. I cross multiply the two of them to get rid of that ugly fraction that I've got. I have y minus 5 is 3x plus 9. Kick the 5 over, y is equal to 3x plus 14. So this line here is y is equal to 3x plus 14, if I need it for the last two parts of this problem. Okay, let's see what they ask me next.
about this diagram. They say R, which is the midpoint of CB, find the coordinates of C. So they in give us CB, they tell us R, which is minus 1, minus 3, is the midpoint of that line, and they want us to find the coordinates of C. Now we have our midpoint formula to do this. So let's see, x plus 4 halved must give me that midpoint of minus 1. And y minus 2, remember it's y plus the minus 2 is y minus 2 halved must give you minus 3. Okay, we are a few steps away from the answer. I get rid of our denominator over here. I get x plus 4 is minus 2. So x here will be minus 6. y minus 2 is minus 6. Hoy the minus 2 over. y will be minus 4. Okay, so I have my coordinates for point C. Point C is minus 6 and minus 2. Four, quite nicely done there. Okay, so point C here, always put your answers on your diagram so that you know that you've done the calculation to get to certain things. Always do that, please. If you've got an answer, put it onto your diagram. You saw me doing this all the time when I was working. Okay, now they say to us, B, A, C, and K. Look at my pen. B, A, C, and another point K is a parallelogram. Hence or otherwise, find the coordinates of K. Okay, so let me do the diagram here because I want to remind you of a principle that we learned. B, A, C, K. B, A, C, and K. And K, I'm going to make the variable point X, K, Y of K. B we've got, B is 4 and negative 2, A I've got, A is minus 3 and 5, and then C is minus 6 minus 4, we just found that. Now folks, they're telling us this is a parallelogram. We know for a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal and parallel. We're looking for this point here. Okay, so I'm going to be very, very quick with my answer. I'm going to say the change in Y for the line BK must equal the change in Y for the line AC because they equal in length and they equal in gradient. So I'm working with my gradients that are equal and I'm working with my components of my gradients. Okay? because it's parallel. So the change in y here is y minus minus 2 is y plus 2 is equal to minus 4 minus 5. Remember this minus that. Okay, so y will be minus 9 minus another 2 which is minus 11. The y coordinate of point k. Same for x. The change in x for bk must equal the change in x for ac. I'm doing that because that distances, those distances are equal and the gradients are equal. Okay? So I work the same way with my x. x minus 4, x of k minus 4 is then equal to minus 6 plus 3. It's a minus minus 3. Okay? So what is the x of k? The x of k is minus 3 plus that 4, which is 1. So what is point k? Point k is the point 1 and negative 11. Okay. We have that now. We've got that answer. There are alternatives. You could have done the following. You could have gone and worked out the midpoint of this line and say, but hang on, this is a parallelogram, so the diagonals bisect each other. So find the midpoint, use it, and in the same way as what we did here, you can then find this point using your midpoint formula. Okay, folks, know your rules. The moment you know your rules, you're going to be able to answer the analytical section quicker.